Coming down to ringside from Queensland, Matthew Shaw. Oh, welcome to Solve Communications team. Good evening to you guys and gals, maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, all of tonight's fights have been sanctioned and endorsed by the Professional Boxing and Martial Arts Board. Chairman Bernard W. Barmer at ringside with Bart McCarthy, Bob Todd. Ladies and gentlemen. Okay, six rounds of boxing. DMS promotion. Stuart Duncan, welcome you to ringside for a night of professional boxing for your enjoyment. Your judges at ringside are Johnny Wheeler, Anika Williams and Ignatius Misselatus. Your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lewis. When the bell tolls, your man in charge of the action, World Championship referee and judge, Malcolm Bullner. Ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing in the junior middleweight division. Would you welcome on my left, occupying the red corner from Morningside in Queensland, making his second professional appearance in Victoria in amateur boxing. 80 fights, 60 wins. He's 23 years of age with Mick Shaw, his brother, and Glenn Azar in the corner, wearing blue trunks with his name emblazoned in white across the front. In professional boxing, eight fights, four wins, two draws, two losses. Scaling 64.65 kilograms. From Morningside, Queensland, give him a warm powerhouse welcome, Matthew Stryker Shaw. Shaw. And across the ring with Ron Parr joining the zookeeper, Bryce Bertwistle from the Malvern Martial Arts Center. He created a tremendous impression here, ladies and gentlemen. Not only the way he fought last time here, but the way he spoke after the bout. Born in Vietnam, Saigon, Vietnam. Came to Australia at the age of seven. Is a very proud Aussie living in Wheeler's Hill. Studies in boxing and kickboxing occupy his time. In kickboxing, 23 fights, 17 wins. In pro boxing, three bouts, one win, two losses, both controversial losses. Scaling 67.65 kilograms, wearing the familiar brute force of red, white, and black with a tiger. Would you welcome the dragon, Paul Lee? Six rounds of boxing. Let's get it on. Malcolm Bulldo. And Barry, this promises to be a terrific fight. Paul Lee in the blue corner. Mick Sh Michael Shaw from, Matt Shaw, I should say, from Queensland in the red corner. Brad. Welcome on to the first night's the first bounce, challenge number two. Here we go. Thank you for your involvement and your indulgence. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. Round. Matt Shaw, a boxer. Good boxer. And we're ready for a start here as referee Malcolm Bourne just checks that our judges are all okay. Round one. And we've got a start. And we've got, uh, let me see now, I thought Paul Lee was a southpaw. He's, he's, he's shut that orthodox here. He's a Matt Shaw is a southpaw. Yeah, yeah Matt Shaw is a southpaw. Uh, Paul Lee's a, an orthodox, but uh, a switch hitter. he's a switch hitter. Matt Shaw, uh, a, a great deal of amateur experience. Um, I've got him at 90 amateur bouts, twice Australian amateur champion, and three times Queensland champion. So that's, that's a very good pedigree behind him. And he's fought some very, very good fighters in the amateurs too. He uh, holds a win over Paul Miller, the, um, the Commonwealth okay. Games gold okay. medalist. Well, that's a good rap. And... Uh, He's a very, very accomplished fighter. Had a little bit of a shaky start, but oh, he's got some good hands there as he uh, unloads just a little bit on uh, on Paul Lee. He's put, just beaten Lee to the punch at the moment. Well, <coughs> my only um, experience with Paul Lee was when he lost on points to world rated Nick De Torres in this same arena uh, in July, I think it was. But uh, since then, he scored a, a sensational first round KO over the up and coming Joanne Crow. Which, what an uh, upset that was, Barry. A bit of an upset. And, uh, so, you know. Lee can punch and he comes to fight as you can see he's walking up on Matt Shaw but Matt Shaw you can see is cagey clever boxing well from his uh, southpaw stance at this stage of the first round and Barry he's just boxing on the back foot he's not standing there in front of Paul Lee Paul Lee's just throwing the big overhand right and trying to uh, trying to load up with every punch and uh, and Matt's just sort of boxing off the back foot using his reach and his height advantage that he has got and of course he's a southpaw so uh, Paul just hasn't, with having only three fights and you can expect that, he hasn't been able to settle down and work him out yet. No, I, Brad, I tell you, just looking at the opening minute or so of the first round here, you can see a big gap in experience and you know, he, he is a very classy boxer, Matt Shaw. We know that Paul Lee's got the power that uh, 
Looks like a tough job he's got in front of him here. We just saw the the, uh, the power that Paul Lee possesses. He just uh, he hit Matt Shaw with a, with a very good looping right hand as, uh, as Matt Shaw ties him up over in the neutral corner. It's, uh, it's a very good fight for this. It's a confidence fight for both fighters. If, um, if uh, Paul Lee was to be able to beat Matt Shaw with the experience that he has, it will certainly spur him on to uh, bigger and better things. And, of course, Matt Shaw has won his last three fights in a row, and he really is boxing on confidence at the moment. As you know, Barry, <coughs> experience is everything, but also confidence is, uh, is, an, is another thing. If you don't have the confidence and the mindset that says you can do it, you can't do it. For sure, looks of good punches being exchanged during the first round. Uh, Matt Shaw landing with a beautiful right hook from his southpaw stance, but uh, Paul Lee fired back with his own vicious right hand. But at this stage of the first round, it's, uh, it's Matt Shaw just being too, too smart. And you're looking at him, Matt Shaw, the striker from Morningside in Brisbane, brother of uh, former Australian rated lightweight Mick Shaw. And uh, just getting a little untidy in there in centering as referee Malcolm Bourne calls a break. You'll notice that uh, Matt Shaw has his hands high, which is good to see for it. For a, oh, nice right, a little right hook there. Oh, big punches thrown by Paul Lee on the bell there to win the first round and a clear, clear round to Matt Shaw. Now, I must say too, that, uh, Brad, that Matt Shaw is giving away three kilograms here. Um, Paul Lee is three kilograms heavier than him, which is 6.6 .6 pound, which is... You know, it's quite a bit. It's a, a division, basically. Well, it's a huge amount of um, huge amount of weight. Uh, 67.65 is uh, Paul Lee, and uh, 64.65 is Matt Shaw. And uh, I think you can see that that was demonstrated in when the did come to come close. That uh, you can see that Paul Lee's got the strength there and the, and the punching power. Um, but I'll tell you what, he'd be. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, Matt Shaw would be well advised to keep his head down and box very cautiously because Paul Lee is capable of landing one of their big, big white hooks of his and uh, changing the bat around. But uh, at the first round there, Matt Shaw a clear points winner, and I'm sure you probably saw it the same. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It was a good round for Matt, uh, for Matt Shaw. Very accomplished young fighter. As we prepare for the second round. Paul Lee in the yellow shorts with the red striping, Matt Shaw in the blue stripes. On the balls of his feet with the red, with the red boots, Matt Shaw. Been training down here, boxing with Lovemore Nadu. Had some good sparring with Nadu. Oh, beautiful little left cross by uh, by Shaw. What he's doing, uh, Barry, is as you can see, he's, he's he's getting. Oh, there's that dangerous right hand from Paul Lee. Yeah, I tell you, that right hand is dangerous. It's nearly caught Matt Shaw in the first round. And that's that's Paul Lee's big big chance. Two minutes. And Matt Shaw, that certainly got his attention. He's now and back on his bike. Yeah, exactly. Just caught him with a good left hook. But uh, Matt Shaw, the the uh, more seasoned, the classier boxer, Paul Lee, the bomber. Ex kickboxer, you know, who's just coming off a big, boy, a big knockout time. over Dwayne Crow. Wasn't that an upset? Dwayne Crow, a uh, terrific young prospect. Oh, a very good prospect. Too far from him. Get closer. <laughs> but as we say quite often, Brad, in this sport of ours, one punch just can change. Yeah. It just change history. Especially if you've got power in both hands, as that man Paul Lee has. You can lose. Uh, and Matt Shaw has to be careful that he doesn't win the fight but lose the war. We're in round two of six rounds here on beautiful Melbourne's Albert Park Lake at the Powerhouse. Yeah, it is a it is a um, very nice spot here. The Powerhouse is uh, perfectly positioned right on the banks of Albert Park Lake, and it's uh, our second promotion from Stewie Duncan of uh, Duncan Promotions, Solve Communications, and uh, he certainly puts a great show together. Oh, there's a beautiful left cross by Matt Shaw. That certainly hit Paul Lee right in the centre of the uh, yeah. of the chin. He was he lost his balance there for a second. He was uh, either a bit shaken or just totally off balance. He's just uh, becoming just a little untidy and probably getting a little bit of desperation, Paul Lee. And, and of course, only having this is his fourth fight. He's uh, he's just not sure which way to come in and, and uh, get on top of Matt Shaw, and he's being picked off by Matt's longer reach. Yeah, he's one of those guys, mate, that's dangerous all the time, though, yeah. Paul Lee. Uh, Matt Shaw, the far classier boxer from his southpaw stance, picking off Paul Lee, but, I mean, you, you know, you've got to beware of those bombs. Oh, he's in with a puncher's chance right till the last bell, Barry. Lovely left hook, the body there from Matt Shaw. Yeah, you're dead right there in the it's not right till it's, yeah. it's over. Using all of the ring, Matt Shaw goes from the left, goes to the right, as Paul Lee goes straight at him and the pair lock, uh, lock horns. Very upright stance, uh, Matt Shaw. He's that nice yeah, little left hook again. He probably would be a better advisor, just a little bit, just to tuck, tuck up a little bit, because yep. the sort of punches that uh, Paul 
please throw in there, the ones that they're very, as you know, when you've got, you got an unorthodox sort of guy who sprays punches and throws punches, they're very, quite often very hard to read. Exactly, and of course, uh, when you are standing up tall like that, you're going to hit every, just like that little left hook from Paul Lee, you're going to walk onto every single one of those. And there's a good round. That's a good round That's, uh, for, another, for Matt Shaw. Yep, another 10-9 uh, round of Matty Shaw. But uh, Paul Lee did land with a few solid ones there. Paul certainly upped his uh, work rate a little bit. He, uh, I don't think he won the round, but he certainly tried a lot harder. He hit Matt Shaw with a lot more punches and, and hurtful punches as well. But, of course, the work rate for the whole three minutes went to Matt Shaw. Undoubtedly. The flyweight chairman of the Commonwealth, a man who's helped many young people on the streets of South Melbourne secure their... Geelong and Henry Nissen here tonight for flyweight champion of the Commonwealth and a celebrity around Melbourne for the Emerald Hill Mission. Steve Jackson coming up next with his option of with Marcus and the team. Uh, coming up next after this fight, you're in the opening fight of the night. This is the second of your Duncan's. Duncan Management Services Boxing Promotions here. It's a dinner show on a beautiful balmy night here in Melbourne. It would be all of 20 degrees outside, I think, Barry, and it's a nice night here on Albert Park Lake. Well, Brad, coming from Queensland, you must appreciate our beautiful weather in Melbourne because uh, we get four or five seasons in a day. <laughs> <laughs> but it is quite nice tonight, very balmy evening, as you said. And we're into the third round. Matt Strikershaw in the blue shorts versus Paul Lee, the dragon. He lets Matt Shaw know he's there with that good hook. dangerous left hook, yeah, of good, course. Good solid hooks there from Paul Lee as he walks up the Matt Strikershaw. You can, you can see Paul Lee now having only his fourth professional fight tonight. But by golly, what about this young man when he's had 20 or 25 fights? Isn't he going to be something special? Yeah, he's very strong. He's a very strong puncher. He just needs to, you know, needs experience in the... Uh, well, he's been a kickboxer for quite a while, but uh, it's a totally different, uh, different sport. Different sport. You stand differently and, and position yourself differently, but uh, he's doing well here. He's, so far, he's going better at the start of this uh, third round. Matt Shaw using both hands there, just working off the back foot, on the back move. Paul Lee putting the pressure on a lot more this round. Really, really having a go. I think what, uh, what I... I Moving. If I was in his corner, all I could sort of say to him is just, instead of throwing the looping punches, just to straighten his punches up, go straight at him, try and work him into a corner and keep him there and, and go straight at him. Head straight down the pipe if he can. The looping punches are not going to work with the southpaw in, in a big tall southpaw. Matt Shaw makes him miss and then makes him pay. He looks back to his corner and said, how do you like that? He's hurt, he's hurt, he's hurt. And Matt's holding on now. There's that punch, Barry, we said. It's a dangerous punch as Paul Lee comes in. Paul Lee landed a oh, right hand there. Matt Shaw's come back well, but he was badly shaken. His legs almost, he did the hurler almost there. My golly, he possesses some power. Paul Lee. Yeah, and, you know, I was just going to say as you were commentating there, Paul Lee looked very determined to land that big punch. If I was in Paul Lee's corner, I'd probably tell him to concentrate on the body, which he's doing, and, and then come over with those big ones to the head. But that was a cracker of a right. Right there. That's a good call, Barry, because I'll tell you why, the body's very hard to move. They can, they can move the head very easily, but the body, it's just so very difficult to move. Once you slow that body up a bit, it's a lot easier to hit it. Certainly a better round for Paul Lee. I don't think he's winning the round, but he's certainly up the ante a little bit. He's let Matt Shaw know that he's there, and if he wants this fight, he's going to have to take it off him. Oh, mate, I tell you, I think this is anyone's round at the moment. I, I'd even tend to lean towards Paul Lee this round so far. I think he's, he's, uh, he's landed some good shots. Well, certainly the, the, the power shots have come from Paul Lee. Ooh, big right hand in this there. Matt Shaw looks a bit uh, in a bit of bother there. He's, he's certainly been you know, upset a bit this round. He's been shaken by the power of Paul Lee. Well, he knows that Paul Lee has got some power. Of course, it's very hard when you've won the first two rounds to stay on your bike and stay in control and not lose concentration. Good, you know, uh, Paul Lee's landed with his left pretty well a couple of times this round as well. Yep, he's got a good left hook. Just becoming a little untidy. He just doesn't know how to sort of get in without good front punches, yeah. Matt Shaw. Yeah, I suppose you, you know Matt Shaw, the scoring punches, the majority of the scoring punches from, yeah. from Matt Shaw, but a far better round from Paul Lee. Far better round. I've given him a share of that round, Paul Lee. Uh, um, against my better judgment, I think that Matt Shaw might have just shaded the round, but I, I give him a little bit of extra credit, Paul Lee, because he, he certainly stunned uh, Matt Shaw in the early part of the first, you know, of that third round. No, he definitely had him badly shaken. He was, he, legs almost crossed at one stage there. He did. He, uh, he certainly knew he was there. He is the man who negotiated world title fights for Anthony and the man Lundin and Rick Laundrie. Against in hockey, the idea of super middleweight champion of the world.
Good to see we have a galaxy of stars here tonight, Barry Michael. It's uh, terrific to see. It sure is. It's, uh, you know, a credit to Stuart Duncan and the shows that he puts on and the, the uh, quality of people that he draws to these events. Victoria's newest promoter and uh, soon becoming Victoria's best promoter. It, uh, and that's, let me tell you, that's a big... Uh, a little mouthful four. as we prepare for the start of round four. I must say at the start of round four, it's great to see Simmons Homes here as the major sponsor. Simmons Homes were my major sponsor at the casino Fight last up. year. Gary Simmons, an ex-fighter himself. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest building companies in Australia. Absolute gentleman, the Simmons boys. Mark Simmons and his father, Gary Simmons, here. Watching out. With Gary, uh, an ex-undefeated uh, professional fighter. And a very good fighter as well, Gary Simmons. Yep. So it's great to see him supporting our great sport. And a very, very nice man as well. It, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him today, and uh, he uh, he supports Stuart Duncan, and he's, but more importantly, he supports the sport of professional boxing. He sure does. As Matt Shaw goes to work on Paul Lee again with that damaging little uh, left cross of his, Paul just can't sort of seem to get out of the way of that punch because that left cross yeah. comes across in, a, in an odd angle. He doesn't really know how to handle Matt Shaw. He's just, it's really, um, well, he's, he's just walking up, you know, having a swing every now and then like that. He's, he's a bit bemused by the Southpaw style and, and also Matt you know, is a very good boxer, very good technical boxer, uses the ring well, hands held high, jab moves, you know, makes, he's very, making it very hard, he's not a stationary target. No he's not, he, he's moving around to his right which uh, which of course nullifies the uh, the right hand, uh, sorry the left hand of, um, of Paul Lee but uh, he's just hitting Paul Lee with that little short uh, right hook every time he comes in and uh, of course he's staying on the back foot, there's the little left cross again followed by the left hand that missed the target. Paul got a little bit of swelling over his left eye now. And, uh, he's walked into a couple of those punches, but he hasn't stopped trying. We'll give him 100% for uh, for his ability to try. Yeah, no, Matt Shaw, you know, boxing a very good fight. He's winning about, well, you know, using the ring well, but in boxing, we've said a million times. When you've got, a, got someone that can punch like Paul Lee, uh, as he did against Joanne Crow, who's a very, very good boxer, competent young boxer with a big, big future. A, a fight could turn around with one one sensational punch. Oh, very much. We've seen it so many times, Brad. Oh, yeah. And, of course, that's what keeps the sport of professional boxing interesting. And uh, when, when you're in the ring, you have a 50% chance of, uh, of winning that fight. Paul Lee, very desperate there. Missed by about a three foot with that right hand. Well, Barry, if you look at his footwork, he's, he's got no footwork as he comes in. Um, typical sort of kickboxer, no disrespect to uh, to any of our kickboxers watching tonight. Yeah, he doesn't I, uh, know how to cut the ring against exactly. a mobile opponent. He needs to be cutting the ring off and uh, manoeuvring Matt Shaw into the corner and, and probably then attacking the body and then looking for the big shot. And Matt just picks him off again with that little... Uh, little right jab of his and uh, it's just constant in, it's constantly in Paul's face and Paul just hasn't uh, been able to sort of uh, put him into a corner and then work away. I think you know after that uh, big right should make sure up in the third round he's uh, he's been a bit more cautious and he's he's uh, probably determined not to get caught like that again. Oh he's got caught with it just there then as I there. said it. There's oh. that right hand. My golly, if Paulie uh, hits Matt Shaw with one of those uh, punches Matt will certainly know it but uh, Good, another good round for uh, for Matt Shaw. Welcome to distinguished guests on table number 16, Mr. Zolak and Mr. Kinnebra. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us tonight. I said we have a galaxy of stars. The former world featherweight champion Johnny Favachon is here. Former great amateur and uh, sorry, triple world champion Jeff Finnick. And triple world champion Jeff Finnick, who's tr the trainer of Saki Obika, came here uh, yesterday. Uh, and they're very confident of upsetting Sam Solomon, taking away the IBF Pan Pacific middleweight title. And we've got one of the best heavyweights that's been produced in this country probably ever, Jimmy yeah. Thunder, who's camped in America for the last seven years. We've got Jimmy in the crowd. He's back in the he's back in Australia and he's back to compete, compete here and looking for a shot at the Australian heavyweight title. And it's terrific to see too, Barry. I don't know about you, Brad, but I don't think there's a heavyweight in the country other than other than uh, maybe Carly Meehan. Maybe Carly Meehan yep. is about the only man I can see I giving, so him a, giving him a run for his money. And I can tell you, everyone, that uh, Jimmy Thunder has been matched on March the 1st here in Melbourne at the uh, new netball centre against former Australian heavyweight champion and number two rated heavyweight Colin Kid Wilson. And that is going to be a terrific fight. No, December the 7th. December the 7th, I think it is. December I said December the 2nd. It uh, said March. Oh, did I? Yeah, but anyway, I'm pretty sure it's December because I was speaking to uh, West, West, Mark West, 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 go to the top. Yes, no, December the, December the 7th, I think. 7th or the 7th, anyway, yeah. December. Jimmy Thunder's back. 
And it's great to see uh, the Thunder from down under who's yeah. returned. Back to the better action now as we see uh, Matt Shaw in, uh, in control of this fight. Yeah, Matt Shaw boxing well. Good to see in the blue corner in the corner of uh, Paul Lee. Um, Bryce Burt whistle. Very experienced martial artist in his own right. Yeah, Bryce has uh, been around a long time and he certainly knows his way around a boxing ring or a kickboxing ring. Keep working, keep sure. working, keep Malvin working. Martial Arts Centre, if you want to learn something uh, about the sport of professional boxing and kickboxing, go and see Bryce down at the Malvin Martial Arts Centre. Good to see. Oh, there's that damaging right hand from Paul Lee as he backs uh, Matt Shaw up again. He's looking for that big right hand, Paul Lee. Mick Shaw and Ben Azar, uh, Matt's trainers and managers in the corner, uh, saying to him, stay on that back foot, keep those hands up, move from left to the right, and he's doing that with, uh, with absolute aplomb, is uh, Matt Shaw. Boxing well from the outside, Matt Shaw. He doesn't want to get involved in a slugging match with a, a heavier and pa more powerful puncher in Paul Lee. Well, if he does, he'll come off second best. Oh, he will come off second best. And this is a game, this is a sport of skill, and Matt Shaw is certainly showing that skill at the moment. Also good to see in the blue corner, Ron Parr travelled all the way over from Western Australia. Very fine martial artist, promoter extraordinaire in Western Australia himself. Come over to put his seal of approval on Matt Shaw. As Paul Lee, it's Matt Shaw unloads on uh, Paul Lee. Lefts and rights ahead. Matt Shaw with some blood coming from the nose now. He certainly felt that right hand from uh, Paul Lee. Oh, that right hand of Paul Lee's, you know, he's certainly very solid. Every time he's landed, half point me, Matt Shaw's felt it. Paul Lee did a very, very good effort against uh, Nick Tatoris, the former WBO um, Asia Pacific uh, Junior Waterweight Champion here at this very same ring you said earlier on, Barry. I saw that fight and I thought he was very unlucky to uh, to lose. Tatoris a very good competitor and uh, he had Tatoris in trouble here at one stage. He did. He fought a good fight. He walked up and he... Look, at the moment, Paul Lee's lucky to experience. And, yes. and he's fighting guys that have... I mean, you know, Matt Shaw's had a lot of experience. He's fighting guys that have had a lot of boxing experience. He is a good puncher, Paul Lee, as shown by that knockout against Joanne Crow and also yep. the, knock, the punches that he's already landed here tonight. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's had some tough matches. He's fought two beautiful shots there, Paul Wasn't Lee. Wasn't that a beautiful in. little short left? Straight left and right hand, and that's another terrific round for Matt Shaw. Welcome, former national champion, soon to be back in action from Altona Meadows, Lim Check. Good evening to you, Lim. Also, Faye from the Inc. Good evening to you, Faye. Thanks for your great support for the Salem Storm. Thank you, Lim. And it's a good round for uh, Matt Shaw, a good fight as we see the end of the fifth round. Matt Shaw in charge. One, one round to go, and at this stage, it looks like a clear victory to Matt Shaw, but. Uh, you never know. It's not over till the fat lady sings. That's for sure. And, you know, when you've got a puncher, things, things can happen suddenly. But uh, the way I see it, you know, Matt Shaw listens to instructions, keeps his head down, keeps moving. He should run out of clear points when he is. As we look at the red corner, you'll see that there's uh, no uh, no panic in the red corner. Mick Shaw and uh, Glenn Azar tending to their young charge. No panic. Just calm, cool and collected. Sixth and okay, the sixth and final round between uh, Matt Shaw and the from the red corner and Paul Lee Paul. in the blue corner. At this stage, Matt Shaw Where? leading on points uh, very well as we're in the final round, but uh, has been shaken a couple of times, Matt Shaw, by the big right hands from a courageous Paul Lee. And we're into the sixth and final round of this first fight on uh, on tonight's big card from the powerhouse here on Melbourne's beautiful Albert Park Lake. And we're looking at that man, Matt Shaw. Boxing a smart fight at the moment. Oh, yes. Brad staying away, using the ring. And his vast amount of experiences has, has really brought him through here. Oh, there's that dangerous right hand from Paul Lee. I have the feeling, Barry, that if he hits Matt Shaw, he's really going to hurt Matt Shaw with that. I think he'd knock out an elephant with that with that right hand if he, if he lands on. There's a big left hook by Paul Lee as well. Matt Shaw fired back well. He was, he was, I don't think he was caught too cleanly there. He was certainly wasn't shaken. But yeah, I think you're right, Brad. I mean, we've got the power to put Matt Shaw up, but he'd need to land cleanly, and I'll tell you what's easier said than done. Oh, there he goes. Oh, just as you speak, Barry Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but well read, Barry. 
There's that powerful well, left hook that certainly caught the attention of Matt Shaw. Matt Shaw came to stay away here as we must be, you know, coming towards the end of round six. It's a matter of preservation for Matt at the moment. I think uh, he doesn't worry about the last round. He's, uh, he's ahead on uh, on our unofficial card here, and no doubt the uh, judges would like what they see as well. But uh, it's a matter of just seeing this fight out. As he walks into another big right hand from Paul Lee. Yeah, I'd be... Uh, if I was Matt Shaw, I'd be making sure that I stayed well away in this round because Paul Lee very determined to land that big one. Matt Shaw hasn't given up trying. He throws a little uppercut there. He stands there flat-footed in front of uh, Paul Lee. At this late stage, it's something that I would be uh, reluctant to do, but uh, he is certainly um, very, very confident, is Matt Shaw. He can't come forward. He's just a backwards mover. Big swinging left hook there from Paul Lee. It was uh, ineffective. Experience has beaten Paul Lee tonight, Barry. It's um, it's just uh, just one of those things that um, I think he's got all the ability. He's got the power. He's got the ability. He's got the desire. The mental strength. Just experience. He's lacking in experience. Look, you know, to be honest with you, I don't want to be too critical, but hand speed's a big thing too, you know, I mean, he, he, he could uh, work on his hand speed and combinations, I mean, he's, he's intent on the big swing more than anything, he's got the power, he's got the necessary tools we need, he's got the physical strength, he's tough, but he needs, he certainly needs work. He does, and, and of course, it's just a matter of just going back into the gym, and I mean, he'll be the better fighter for this, you know, and that's the end of the fight, and that's a terrific little contest for our start here tonight. Matt Shaw and Chief Paul Lee come over to the red corner to congratulate uh, Mick Shaw and Matt Shaw. Good sportsmanship from Matt Shaw. Our judges tonight are Nika Williams. Ignatius Missalides and John Wheeler. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the scorecards and we have a unanimous decision. All judges, Ignatius Missalides, John Wheeler and Anika Williams saw eye to eye, 58-56, all for the winner from the red corner, Brisbane's Matt Stryker Shaw. Okay.